This position is white to play and win, and there's a very clever solution. When I first looked at it, I thought I saw the idea. Turns out I was way off, and so I'll be interested to see if you guys can see this one. So if you'd like to pause, it's white to play and win. What do you think, not only white's first move, but what do you think the idea is behind winning this position with the white pieces? Go ahead and take a look at that, and then we'll talk about the solution. All right, well, if you had a chance to look at that, the first thing we need to understand is that normally when you have an extra pawn in a king and pawn endgame like this, it's usually pretty good. It's significant because you can use that extra pawn as a passed pawn to push it. Or even if you have, let's just say this pawn was over here. If you have two or here, let's just say two against one, you could create a passed pawn and either get a queen or use it as decoy while you go and take another pawn, something like that. But in this case, we've got double isolated pawns. And if we try to move, black's going to simply take us. So the first move is king to g2 trying to get our king involved. The problem is black plays king to g6. We play king to f3, trying to, to support this. And black plays king to f5. And what are we going to do? If we push the pawn now, black's going to simply take it. So at this point, I'd like you to pause. What do you think the winning move is for white? All right, well, if you had a chance to look at that, the winning move is pawn to e4 check. And yes, I kind of set you up to not say that because I just said black's going to take it and they will take it. The reason we do this is because we can't do anything else. Um, like if we go this way, black's just gonna mirror our king. This is called opposition, by the way, where the kings are directly opposed. And since black played the last move, we can't go in, right? And if we go over the same thing, same thing, same thing. And we just, we can't do anything. If we try to come down this way, well, black's gonna come in and now we're losing our pawn like this. And we're, we're the ones fighting for a draw at this point, okay? So there's really nothing else to do. Now you might, say, well, just because there's nothing else to do, how does giving up a pawn help us? Well, you're going to see that in just a second. So e4 check, and of course, black takes our pawn. And again, if you would like to pause, what should we play here? There's only one winning move for white. All right, well, if you had a chance to look at that, the winning move is king to g3. We go this way. And at first glance, you're probably thinking, well, why don't we just come over here and stay close to the pawn? Well, the reason we don't want to do that is because now black's going to come here. And again, black has the opposition on our king, which forces us to go backwards. And if we're not careful, we can actually lose this game. So if we go here, black plays the move king to f4, and actually now black is winning. And if you're curious how that happens, king to e1, king to e3, again, getting the opposition. We have to step to the side. Let's just say over here, the king comes in. And here it's actually black to play and win. This is kind of a bonus puzzle for you. But what should black play to win this position? All right, well, if you had a chance to look at that, hopefully you didn't say pawn to e3 check because this is actually a win for white because now we play the move king to d3 and we get this weird situation where both kings are attacking each other's pawns, but it's black to move and black has to move away from their pawn. They have to go either up here or down here and we simply take the pawn and now white wins. So that was a, a trap that black could fall into. However, if black plays the move king to f1, Black actually wins this game, and here's why. King to e3 is probably our best try going for this pawn, and Black says, I don't even care. I'm going to come over here to e1, and if we take this, now Black takes our pawn, and look what happens. Here, 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 trying to get the pawn, but Black is there first, defends, and he's going to take our pawn, and we have no way to stop this guy. Okay, so very tricky pawn endgame, king and pawn endgame here. So going all the way back here, when we play e4, black takes, if we make the mistake of going to e3, we have to be really careful. Now, we could actually play king to f2 here and it's still a draw, but the only winning move is actually not to go that way, but to go over to g3. Now, black, uh, of course, is trying to keep us from like infiltrating, and so coming around the side maybe, and so black plays the move king to g5, gets the opposition. So what should we play here? This is relatively easy move, but I'll give you a chance to pause. What should white play? All right, well, if you had a chance to look at that, the move is pawn to e3. And this is a way of using a pawn to gain the opposition on black. So opposition, it's when the kings are directly opposed, but it's important to note who played the last move. So since black played the last move, that puts us or puts our king in a tough spot, right? Like we'd like to go forward, but we can't. So normally you have to either go backwards or you have to step to the side when, when your opponent has you in opposition, right? But in our case, in this position, we have one extra pawn. And we can use it. So we can play e3 
and now it's opposition, but we played the last move, even though it wasn't a king move, same idea, and black has to make the tough decision of do they go backwards or do they step to the side? Now, they don't really want to go backwards, right, and let our king just come up. That looks pretty easy. So what does black play? They play king to f5. They're trying to keep an eye on their pawn and not let us come in. However, now you can probably see king to h4, and we are sneaking around the side, okay? So here we go. King goes to e5, king to g5, and again, here's another example of opposition where black has to make the decision, do I move backwards or do I move to the side? They probably don't want to go here because then it allows us to come to f4 followed by f5 like this. And so what black does instead is go here, but we actually get the same position. We play the move king to f5. Now black plays king to c5. If you'd like to pause, what move should white play here? All right, well, if you had a chance to look at that, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that 90% of you guys said to take the pawn. And if you did not say that, let me know. Comment below and say, I saw it. I saw it. I didn't do it, Nelson. Um, but I'm going to say most people said take the pawn, right? That's why we did all this, to take the pawn. Wrong. The move to win the game is king to e5. And you're probably wondering, Nelson, why are we not taking the pawn? It's a free pawn. We want a pawn because we want to use this as a decoy or to get a queen or something, right? Here's what happens if we take the pawn. Black's going to play the move king to c4. Notice the opposition forces our king to either go this way or to go up. So we're probably going to move, let's just say here, so we can escort our pawn to become a queen. The issue is that black doesn't care about that because they're going to go and get their own queen. And watch what happens. Here, here, takes... We get a queen first, but black also gets a queen. We're not going to be able to win this position, right? Black's just going to dance around the queen, and yes, we can get some checks. It doesn't really matter. Actually, it's already going to be a draw. So that is black's very clever idea of like, hey, you want to take my pawn? Go ahead. I'm going to go get this pawn, and, and I'm going to... It's just going to be a draw. So that's why we don't take it. We play the move king to e5. All right. So black plays here. It's white to play. What move should white play now? All right, well, if you said king takes e4, I'm sorry to tell you that is also wrong for the same reason as before. The fact that the black king moved over here doesn't change anything. Black still goes to king to c4. We get the exact same position, right? So what do we need to play? King to d5. And notice how we keep pushing the king further and further away. All right, so black plays the move king to b4. White to play. What should we do now? All right, guys. Well, if you had a chance to look at that, hopefully you didn't say take the pawn. Hopefully you didn't say that, right? This is a third time, but it's the same thing. If we take the pawn, guess what? The king goes to c4. We've seen this line before. Exact same thing. Nothing changed, right? This goes, the black gets their own queen. Okay. So, um, what's the move here? King to d4. We're still boxing out the king. And at this point, you're probably thinking, okay, that's great, Nelson, but black's just going to go back. And now what do we do? White to play and win. What's the winning move for white? All right. Well, if you had a chance to look at that, the move is king to c3. And now we finally see the idea. Okay. The point was never to take this pawn. That's not how you win this position. You win this position by taking this pawn and leaving this one because you didn't have time to take it. Because if you took it, you allowed black's king in. By leaving it, you could sneak around and not give black the option to come in and take this pawn. And black can try to hold on for one more move. We go up, forces him to leave. We take this pawn. And now it is a winning king and pawn endgame. We could simply do something like this. And we can start pushing our pawn, probably like b3, and then just bring our king up like this. Okay? And yes, he's going to get that pawn. Now it doesn't matter. We come over here. We escort our pawn with our king, and we get a queen. Okay? So fascinating puzzle i had no idea when we, when i was going through this puzzle guys i'll show you what i was thinking i was thinking probably like most of you guys take the pawn and then when i saw the idea of the king coming in i was thinking okay maybe we just keep pushing the king over for a few more moves and then take it but then i realized wait no it's still the same thing and i didn't know what was happening and then right here is when it kind of clicked for me like oh we're taking this pawn right so fascinating puzzle it's amazing how such a simple position only a couple of pawns can have all those different intricacies in it. And that's one of the things that makes chess so much fun and uh, such a complicated game to, to learn and to master really well. So hope you guys enjoyed that one. I know I did, and I'll see you in the next one. As always, stay sharp, play smart, and take care.